Now then people, blog time. Out on the bank again. Um, I'm fishing on Attenborough Nature Reserve, Lagoon 1. Um, I'm fishing right up at the top end. Um, well, I'm fishing uh, three rods. I'm fishing all three of them over to the far margin for the time being. I got here yesterday and I, I haven't been able to do any blogging at all because it's been absolutely pissing it down my rain. I got here yesterday, Sunday, about uh, two o'clock, quarter past two, and it was just raining all day, all last night, all the way through the night. It's been raining all morning. It stopped raining about 15, 20 minutes ago. It's about quarter to one now. So yesterday trying to get stuff done was an absolute nightmare. So me and the fishing dog down there, let's go. Say hello to the crowd. There she is. She's laid on my bed with her blankets on top. Where she's nice and warm. I've only just zipped the front of the bivy down a bit fuller. I've had that zipped up because the wind wind has been horrendous in the rain like I say so I haven't really been able to do any blogging I was going to go and fish somewhere else but the way the weather was it would have been a nightmare and I've made a schoolboy error and I haven't charged my charger box up properly I've, ch I've charged it with a, like the pin plug that goes into it the wrong way around I think and it's only put so much charge on it I put it on charge for 12 hours one day 10 hours another day and then another 6 hours another day and there's hardly any charge on it, so for me to go to fish the other place I was going to fish, which was the secret location, I can't because I ain't got enough charge on my charger box. So it means for me cameras and things like that, I'd end up running out. So what I've done, I've come to where I am. I'll show you. You stay there a minute, Sky. Stay there a minute. So I've come like I say, to Attenborough Nature Reserve um, and I'm on, like I say, Lagoon 1 so I'm right up at the top end I was going to fish right the way down there at one stage but with it being so wet and I can't get my van up there, you see whereas where I am now I can get my van directly at the back just there and it's tucked away, you see, the van is so it's tucked away there nice so uh, I've only got to hop from around the back of the out of the bivet into the van and then that's it I'm uh, I can charge anything that I want so I was otherwise if I'd gone to the other places I've only been able to fish for a couple of days because I would have run out of charge so but at least now um, I can fish three, four days if I want to. Well, that's what I've got off anyway till I'm back at work. Um, yesterday, what I did yesterday was I banged three, I banged a chod out over here, a chod out over here, and a, a wafter out over here. Over there it is pretty clean, it's gravel, mixture of gravel and so it's about 12 and a half foot, 13 foot of water. But what I've done is I've just put some bait in, I've put 20 spoms in along here. Just from like there to along there in an area. And then what I've done is I've took my rods out because I need to come walk the dog. So I've put that bait in. And then what I'll do is later on I shall uh, put some boilies out. I put some boilies out yesterday and the birds were on them, even right up, right just before dark. So I'll have to try and get them out later. But I'm going to leave the rods out, let that bait settle, see if I can get some fish in the area. And get my rods out and then put some boilies out around and over the top and uh, either side of the margin. Margins where I've got the bait and then just fish over that with three rods over that for the time being um, fishing dog shivering, I don't know why because it's not cold it's just being a wuss 
Cheers. It's not cold now like it was. But yeah, I've got oh shit. I've got some other bits and bobs to sort out. Like I say, I've put 20 spawns out of a mixture. Spod mix with everything in it. Hemp. My normal mix, pigeon conditioner, different boilers, some corn, uh, some vitalin, and some other bits and pieces. My normal spod mix, really. And then, uh, like I say, I should get them rods out again later, and then them rods can stop in then. And then I'll put some more boilers out later on before it gets dark. And then just fish over that. And I'm going to fish over that area for a few days and if nothing comes of it, then one of the rods I shall try in a different area, possibly off of the edge of this tree here, or down my right hand margin, there's like a tree around here, and walk out of my waders and place the bait in the water. Um, I don't know, I'll see first, but I'm going to sign off for now because I've got all sorts to do because the fact it's been raining. So I've only just really got organised properly. I've got all my rods clipped up, ready to go back out. Spod's clipped up where it needs to be. Marker's clipped up. So I've just had some to eat. Just had a couple of cobs. I've stopped eating bread, but I had a couple of hamburgers yesterday with some brioche buns with uh, cheese slices on. A double Gloucester and chive in it, and a couple of slices of that left over, and a couple of the brioche buns. So I've just had them now. And then breakfast had some fruit and a few biscuits and a cup of coffee. So, and then for tea later, I've got a uh, steak, steak and roasted vegetables. So I'm looking forward to that. Right, I'm going to sign off for now anyway, people, and then I'll uh, I'll get back to you in a bit. Okay, okay, adios for now. Alright, blog time. Update. It's only going to be a quick one. The weather is miserable still. Absolutely lousy. You can see, look. It's, it's not very nice at all. It's just everything is just wet through and covered with mud everywhere. Inside the bivvy as well. Um, all down there where I've been casting the rods but what I've done is I've put two rods out over there with two chods where I baited with spod and then off that corner there I've found a spot off of that corner and I've put two spods of boilies over there and two spods of particle and then put a rig on that so I'm going to keep that rig on that and keep them two over there and then just see how that goes. I can't really do anything else. Not with this weather being like it is. It's an absolute nightmare. Um, so I'm going to sign off for now and get back in the bivvy. Um, obviously, if anything happens, then I'll, I'll update everybody. Sorry that the filming's a bit shit, people, but there's nothing I can do about it. Poxy weather. Always oh, the same it is. Right, I'll catch you in a bit. Morning people. It's Tuesday morning. Me and the fishing dog have just been for a little bit of a wander. Now the weather today, finally, the rain has stopped. The sun's coming out. Just starting to come out. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. That sun is just coming out up there. Thank God. So at least now should be able to get everything dried off. I mean, I was so tired last night. I went to bed early and then I got woke up at uh, what time was it? One o'clock in the morning. We have run on the left hand rod which is the one that's right off of that well I say run it started to run bleep 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 I got up got my shoes on by the time I got my shoes on the run had stopped and the bobbin was uh, had rose up and gone back down so it must have just been a liner it's either a liner or a bought a take 
Sky, for some reason this morning fishing dog can't start eating grass. Don't know what it is. Yeah, she can't be thirsty. She's got plenty of water down there. Yeah, so, um, at least that's a good sign. I could have had a pick up last night off that corner. I said to my mate on the phone, Mr. Richard Beale, give him a shout out, Mr. Richard Beale, he'll like that. Um, if any rod goes, I think it'd be that one. I've had no other liners or anything, not like the night before where I was getting constant liners. So I reckon the night before when I was getting constant liners, I think it was, uh, I think it was uh, skimmers or roach or something, a shoal of them. But um, I've had a line this morning, I mean my alarm was set for half six, I woke up at half six. And I felt so tired, I've gone back to sleep and it's nine o'clock. I never normally sleep in like this when I'm fishing, ever. I just felt that tired, my whole body, my shoulders, my arm, my bad leg, my back, everything. I just felt shattered. And then we're getting set up in the rain and getting everything, trying to get everything sorted out. I've had two days of just be, it being a nightmare, really. And then being stuck in the bivvy the rest of the time, I was just worn out. So I feel a lot better this morning, a lot more positive. So. And I've got the door open on the bivvy. Eh? The dog can go in and out when she wants. I can go in and out when I want and be a lot more organised today. So buzzing. So I'm gonna get some uh, get myself a cup of coffee, get myself some fruit, and then uh, I shall fetch these rods in about half ten and get them cast back out again. I'm not gonna put any bait out. And then uh, I might put a little bit more bait out at tea time. I'll see you first. Right, I'm going to sign off for now, people. So I'll so see you in a bit. Adios. Get out of it, Sky. Get out of it, dog. Honestly, this dog, people, wherever I go, she wants to be all the time. She's on me. Cheers. She's like she's attached to my side. Right, a bit of an update. The weather has changed dramatically. All the rain stopped, the winds calmed down. There's still a breeze on the water and it's gone really warm as well. Um, I've had a good clear out in the bivvy. And uh, basically what I've done is where I've been fishing over that far side, I'll show you. Over here where I was fishing, I had like a rig here, a rig here, and then one off that corner. That corner's produced nothing, no liners, nothing. And then last night, like I said, at one o'clock, I got woke up here. Well, my alarm was starting to go off, got my shoes on, but it stopped. Got outside, waited near the rod, couldn't see anything. Thought, nah, it's just a liner. And like I say, earlier on today I noticed at the end of my rod, the line off of my right hand rod was over the other rod. So I reeled it in and it was stuck in a weed bed. Um, but I thought it was a fish, but I don't think it was. I think what's happening is from right here, all the way down this margin here, there's just a mass of birds. And I mean a mass of birds, there's just tons and tons of tufties. Um, Grebes, seagulls, and they're diving on what bait I had put out there. I think they've been diving on it all night, and I think that's what picked me up because they're still diving on what bits are left now. So there's definitely been no carp over there, I don't think. So I thought to myself, do I keep fishing over there or do I try and find something different? And then when I was marking about the other day out there, I found um, an area which I thought was really hard gravel and then this bloke come down this morning and he says oh my mate fishes in here in this peg he says he's had some out of here he says they get up here he says but there's a there's a, a mussel bed out there well, when I fish further down there I, there was a mussel bed down there 
and I fished on it and it didn't do any good. Well, I didn't think it was a mussel bed. I thought it was gravel, actually. It must have been the mussel bed. And it seems like the mussel bed runs. It's about nine and a half wraps out and it runs across here. It does. It's more prominent here and then it starts to thin out. So what I've done is I've moved all three rods and I've got one on the edge of the mussel bed where it's going into the sand. I've got one in the back of like the mussel bed here where it's not so prominent then where it's more prominent here I've got one just off like on just like going into the mussel bed but what I've done is because I know I'm fishing on the mussel bed and I don't want to get cut off basically what I've done is is I've got uh, some really thick lead core leader on some really heavy stuff the Nash stuff on two of my rods and then I've got another fox leader on but all three of them are heavier a lead core and a lot more abrasion resistant and then what I've got on all three of my rods is I've got a leader a thick mono leader like f uh, one of the uh, two of them are tapered fox leaders and one of them no sorry one of them's a tapered fox leader and the other two are ESP tapered leaders so I've got them on and basically that means that if the fish run over the mussel bed I'm not, I ain't going to get cut off, which is very unlikely anyway, not with the lead core leader on and then them leaders as well. And then instead of fishing bottom baits on it, obviously, which is not the one, I've put two multi rigs out there. One sat about inch and a half off the deck, the other one sat about two inches. One's got a, a pink crave pop up on, the other one's got a brown crave pop up on. Both 14 mil pop ups. Um, and then my other rod, my right hand rod, where it's coming off the edge of the mussel bed and into the uh, sand here, I've put a waft, my normal wafter rig on that and I've got a Crave bottom bait and then I've got a Dynamite Squid and Spice purple pop up on the top uh, which I've done well on before so I've got all three rods on that area and I have seen fish on that area. I actually saw it when I saw a fish top out when I first got here and last night I heard something bosh out there. But that bloke says to me, it's a good area for getting them that is. So well, I've put all three rods on there. I was going to leave one rod on that margin over there but it's just a waste of time. The birds are just constantly picking me up. And they're just diving all the time. There's that many birds over there, so unless I see any carp bosh out over there or any shows, I'm going to keep all three rods on the area that I'm on, I think. Um, I mean, lucky enough, I didn't put masses of baiting over there, and he put like, all together, there's probably about, what, 20 spawns, but there was only like half spawns. There weren't full spawns, and I think the birds have had near enough all of that now. I put so many boilies out, about a kilo and a half all the way along that margin when I first got here, all the way along it and it hadn't done nothing in two days, it's just all that's happened is the birds just keep diving on it so what I've basically done is I've marked that area out, clipped up with my spod uh, obviously I've took a bit off of the spot so that my bait's landing right on my rigs. I'm fishing at nine and a quarter wraps. So I've took a two, two and a bit foot off of my spot rod and clipped it up there so that my bait's landed on where my rigs are because of the depth of water. Because the depth of water is about 13 foot. So... Uh, sorry, what am I on about? I've took uh, one, four, I took three and a bit foot off, sorry, on my spawn rod and clipped it up. Uh, and I'm fishing it nine and a quarter wraps. Um, so that's it, but it's a lot better now, it's lovely and warm. I've basically had a tidy up. And also, people, I've got a new pod. I've got the new JRC. Extreme T TI Europod. 
bought it from Angling Direct, it should have been £130 and then it's been knocked down to £109 and then I got a further 10% off of it. I have bought the rod rest to go with it as well, the uh, JRC blocks, but one of them's faulty. So that all three of them are going to have to go back. Yeah, I really like them, the blocks are well smart. I'll have to show you them at a further stage. So I've put my normal rod rests on. But I don't know if you can see it, people. It is absolutely mint, the pod is. It's so rock solid. Obviously, it comes with um, where you can alter, obviously, rests front and back. The front section opens out about an extra three foot. The back section opens out about an extra three foot. With these lovely clips just here that clip down tight. Um, and then the legs. The legs alter. If you undo them here, they're on a CAD system. You unscrew the legs there and they will go a full 360 degrees around that way. And it's the same at the front. If you undo them there the legs will also go 360 degrees round that way so you can have the legs wherever you want and they're extendable legs on the sticks that I've got in now as you can see so you undo them there and extend them they extend about uh, about three and a half foot same as the front ones about three and a half foot but then inside the case as well um, Inside the case as well, you get a set of eight foot. Uh, you get a set of four foot legs that extend out to about eight foot, so you can use it as a sky pod as well, like my old one. But I absolutely love it. It's a shit up piece of kit. So if anybody's looking for a decent pod, honestly, the JRC Extreme Pod. You can get it from Angling Direct for hundred and nine pound, and it's got spikes on the bottom as well, so you can stick it into any ground. Or, if you don't want it to spike it in, you can just leave it on. What's there? What ground's there? What surface is there? But honestly, I fucking love it, I do. Just can't stop looking at it. But my other one I had for about eight years, and if you could see on my last video, at A1P, it, it broke, knackered up. The top parts of the legs, the bearing, the clipping sections went on it. So I'm just really pleased with that. Really, really chuffed with it. Like I said, I've got the JRC block rod rests as well, the square block ones, but I've got my normal black ones on, which still look nice. Um, but I'm going to have to take them back and get them changed. So, uh, and the next thing I want is I want a new set of reels, and I'm going to get a set of the wi uh, wing casts. Um, the black ones, the black wing casts. I'm either going to get a set of those or a set of the Fox. Um, the Fox EOS, I think they're FX9s, or no, not the FX9s, the FX12s, the big pit ones, it's either going to be them or the, the wing casts. These cross casts I've had for years, absolutely years, well, about four years, and they've been hammered, I've used them everywhere. They're still alright, they still work, but this one here, I don't know if it's the bearings or something, it just don't feel right and it's not winding properly all the time. Feels as if it's slipping. So, but what I should do is I should still keep them and then use them on like the trend if I'm ever carping on the trend or anywhere like that where it's a bit rougher or if I need to boat baits out really, really long way because they hold about, I think them spools on there hold about 600 yards of 15 pound line. They do. So, yeah, so anyway, it's a lot better now, the weather. I feel a lot better, I feel a lot more confident. So, I just have to see what the night brings. I mean, you know, your salespeople normally fishing on pits like this. Normally bite time's night time, isn't it? I'm through into the morning, you don't normally get bites in the daytime unless it's really sunny and they're up in the margins. So, right, I'm going to sign off for now. I'll chill out for a bit, tie a few more rigs up, have another coffee, and then it'll be time for something to eat. Last night I had steak and roasted vegetables. Breakfast this morning I've had two pieces of fruit and a coffee. Lunchtime I had some minestrone soup and two bags of um, oh, and round to mini cheddar things, small bags. 
And then for tea tonight, I'm going to have salad and some uh, salami. I am. Right, I'm going to sign off for now, so I'll catch you in a bit. Oh yeah, I just want to thank everybody as well for watching my videos, what, what I think about it. I do appreciate people watching. I mean, I know my films aren't brilliant because I can't afford a laptop at the minute. My laptop's broke. So every time I do any filming, I do it off of my point-and-shoot camera, my Sony, and I transfer it to my mobile phone via NFC. And then I have to mess about on my phone editing it for hours and then put it up onto YouTube. That's why I don't put a lot of music and do a lot of different things on it because I haven't got the laptop to be able to edit it properly. But... But people seem to like them anyway, so at the end of the day it gives me so much to do, keeps the diary in me fishing and if it entertains people, then fair enough. Alright, waffling again, so I'm going to sign off for now, catch you in a bit people.